Is your laptop running extremely hot? Are you at the point where you're turning on the air condition in the middle of winter? Well, guess what? I have a solution for you. I have these awesome laptop coolers that are gonna reduce temperatures by 400 degrees. Well, at least that's what manufacturers are telling you. Maybe not 400 degrees, but definitely reducing the temperatures. So I'm putting a little video together to find out if these laptop coolers are actually worth it. And we're gonna be doing a bunch of tests to find out. Now the laptop of choice is the Razer Blade 16. I know this laptop inside out, it does get quite hot. So I think this is a good candidate to see if temperatures get reduced. Also, I'm using a Razer laptop cooler as one of the coolers because it has a certain feature called Hyper Boost that other coolers do not have. So I wanna see if this makes a difference. But the other cooler of choice is from a well-known company called Lano. And the biggest differences between these two products is kind of little things. So the Lano cooler, for example, has a big 140 millimeter fan, just like the Razer in the middle. It's obviously a bigger cooler. They both can support laptops all the way up to 18 inches. The Razer has these little lids that go on top. There's two of them that come in the box. So this one supports a laptop between 14 and 16 inches. Then there's another one that you place on if you wanna put a bigger laptop on top. This one is just kind of like one size fits all. They do have little foam on it so that it keeps your laptop nice and cozy. And this foam kind of creates a seal on the bottom of the laptop to help keep the air from going out. Uh, aesthetics, personal preference. I personally find the Razer laptop cooler to look a little better. It's slightly smaller. They're both made out of plastic. The Razer laptop cooler is more expensive at 150 bucks compared to $90 for the Lan Lano cooler. They both have USB ports. So there's a cable that's attached to this and you get three USB ports on the back. Whereas the Lano cooler has three USB ports on the side, plus a type C port that connects to your computer. Then of course a DC in to run the fan itself. The Razer laptop cooler is a bit more customizable because it syncs up with the Synapse software and you can get really creative and change the RGB. Obviously you can do it manually too with the buttons on the side. One will turn it on, this one will obviously turn the fan on, and then this one will cycle through the different colors. The Lano can do the same thing, but it's on the front over here. And then you have a little rollable contraption that allows you to increase the fan speed. So for all these tests, the fan speeds were at max for the Lano cooler, and for the Razer laptop cooler, I left it on Hyper Boost. So Hyper Boost is specific only to the Razer laptop cooler, and it only works with two Razer laptops. The Razer Blade 16 2024 model, which I have here, and the Razer Blade 16 2023 model, which I don't have here, but they both have to have RTX 4090s. And basically what Hyper Boost does is syncs the fan to the fans inside the laptop. So basically every time the fans would ramp up in the laptop, so with this one. So you'd have more control over the audible sound of the fans. Whereas this guy, I just crank the fans all the way up and it's loud all the time. I should also mention that they both have a way to clean dust on the bottom of these laptop coolers. There's a little contraption over here that you can kind of take out and then remove the dust filter, clean it or replace it with a new one when it gets too dirty. Now there are four ways I tested out the cooling. I tested out the Lano cooler, the Razer laptop cooler, the laptop just sitting normally on the desk like this. And then another scenario where the laptop is slightly raised to allow more air into the bottom. The first test I did was 3D Mark Time Spy. This was a great way to see how the GPU temperatures would react. And to my surprise, the Razer laptop cooler ran the coolest out of the bunch with temperatures 10 to 12 degrees cooler than having no cooler at all. The Lano cooler also did a decent job, but it only reduced the temperatures by five to six degrees. And fun fact, there was actually no difference between the laptop being raised off the desk or sitting flat on the table. 
But if you're actually to take a look at performance, there was a difference, but it's not drastic enough to get excited about. Like I saw a three performance difference from having no cooler to using the Razer laptop cooler. And with the Lano cooler, it was about 2.5 to 2.7. The next application I ran was Fearmark, and this is used to stress test your GPU to its full potential. And again, the Razer laptop cooler ran the best. It was nine to 10 degrees cooler than the rest. The Lano cooler also did a decent job dropping temperatures by four to five degrees Celsius. But I saw no difference between the laptop sitting flat on the table with no cooler compared to it being raised. Now, if you're mostly doing work with your laptop, I decided to do a video rendering test using DaVinci Resolve and the Lano cooler and the Razer cooler both finished under 10 minutes with the Razer cooler shaving off six more seconds in terms of how fast the file rendered. When I raised the laptop, it did it in under 11 minutes, but sitting flat on the table took 11 minutes and 15 seconds. This was one time where having it raised did a better job. I also checked the temperatures when the file was rendering and the Razer laptop cooler kept temps between 70 to 76 degrees Celsius. Now I also wanted to test CPU performance under full load, so I ran Prime 95 and the Razer laptop cooler sat around 76 to 77 degrees Celsius. The Lano cooler was around 77 to 78 degrees Celsius, but raised or flat, it didn't matter. It sat around 84 to 86 degrees Celsius. So again, we're shaving off like eight to nine degrees Celsius, which is a pretty big deal if you're using your laptop under load for long periods of time. But the most interesting part was that when you're looking at the average core clock speeds, they were pretty similar between all laptops. The Lano cooler, no cooler, and the raised option all sat around 2550 megahertz, whereas the Razer laptop cooler sat a little bit over 2600. And finally, I tested out Black Myth Wukong to see if I saw a massive performance difference between these different scenarios, and there really wasn't much of a difference. The coolers ran at 63 frames per second, while not having a cooler sat at 62. The difference between one FPS is not enough to get excited about, and not really scientific enough to say using a laptop cooler gives you more performance. But there is one big caveat to using a laptop cooler. And that is noise. Like these things are ridiculously loud. Like if you crank up the Lano fan to its max, you're listening to 68 decibels of noise. Like that sitting beside you is going to drive you crazy. Now the Razer laptop cooler in hyper boost mode is a little better because the fans are not always sitting at its highest. It averaged around 64 decibels, which is still significantly louder than the mid fifties you'd get without a cooler. So here's what I have to say. If you're buying a laptop cooler to improve performance, you're not gonna see that much value out of it. But if you're buying a laptop cooler to have your laptop actually run cooler, there is an argument to buy one. Now the Razer laptop cooler is very expensive and quite frankly, I don't recommend it unless you're buying a Razer Blade 16 and can take advantage of hyper boost. That's the only circumstance I'd say maybe paying extra for it is worth the money. But I feel like for most people, the Lano cooler is good enough to keep those temperatures low enough to improve the longevity of your laptop. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.